was a beautiful summer day down in the lowlands when I met the infamous Aunt Pearly Sue. Aunt Pearly Sue is the theatrical creation of Anita Joy Singleton Prather. I should say Reverend Anita Joy Singleton Prather, a native of the Sea Islands in Beaufort County, South Carolina. She's lively, energetic, entertaining, soulful, and full of information, just like her stories. Well, we just want to welcome you. Decoration day, say decoration day. Decoration day. Turn to neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. You think you come for see our pearly suit? You come for see our pearly suit? Say wrong answer. Say wrong answer. Say this is a family reunion. We just want to welcome you home. You know, if you can't get home to Mother Africa, this is the second best place. Tell them, Mama. Three out of four, y'all came through these ports of Carolina, so you're just back home. And we're so glad you finally found us. My brothers and over there and, and, and Sierra Leone said, we was looking for the Gula people. <laughs> can you find, can you see me? <laughs> That's why I like bright colors, because I don't want y'all to miss me again. <laughs> For a solid two hours within the walls of the Tabernacle Baptist Church, Anita, oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Pearly Sue, entertains and educates a congregation of locals and tourists on a history that is rarely told, but oh so important. The story about how, as a people, all people are connected by fate and by blood. How we're all just regular kinfolk, but there was always a beginning. Be your eyes blue before bullshit long. You know, before y'all get them little contact lenses. <laughs> you know, before your hair was blonde, before dark, you know, before Miss Clairol, y'all understand. <laughs> you understand? All of that. Before we were anything else, be it African American, Asian, Hispanic, Caucasian, whatever you call yourself. <laughs> Before you were any of those things, all of us were just Africans. Isn't it awesome? It is a common denominator for all of us. So if you didn't know you was a gullah kinfolk before you got in this place, you'll know before you left from you. <laughs> so God bless you and welcome to Decoration Day 2011. Today we call it Memorial Day, but in the 1800s, Anita says it was known as Decoration Day in honor of the fallen Union soldiers during the Civil War. I got a chance to talk with Anita a little bit later, out of costume, but yet still full of history. It was a big thing for the blacks and northern whites, southern whites didn't celebrate Decoration Day because the, the, the birth of Decoration Day was Abraham Lincoln designated these 29 acres here that made up the original National Cemetery here as the final resting place for those who fought to preserve the Union. So of course, since the Southerners didn't fight to preserve the Union at that time, um, they didn't celebrate. They celebrated uh, May 10th, which was considered Confederate Memorial Day. That was Jefferson Davis's birthday. And um, so Memorial Day, what we call Memorial Day now, used to be just called Decoration Day because it was decorating the graves. The graves were decorated by some of the first black women to be freed during the Civil War. These African-American women, along with their European-American sisters, made up the Women's Relief Corps. It served all, all the Union soldiers, but um, when the war was over, those U.S., if you go in the, in, in the National Cemetery, you see USCT, which stands for United States Colored Troops. Those colored troops, they felt like were going to be forgotten. And so they wanted to make sure that we did not forget the sacrifice that they made to become, especially the ones that were here in Buford, became the first infantry of black soldiers for the Civil War. And so the Women's Relief Corps took on the duty of caring for those veterans, those colored veterans, and when they died, to make sure that their graves were taken care of and decorated. So gave birth to Decoration Day. And Anita's grandmother was a part of the Women's Relief Corps. Down these streets, there would be parties, parades, decorations, good food, music, and fellowship. But before any of this could happen, the Sunday before, the locals would march down to the waters. Sunday, always the Sunday before Decoration Day, they would always have the march to the sea. 
where we'd go to the waterfront and we would throw flowers out in the water for the unknown soldiers that had been killed because we wanted to make sure. And, that, and like, that's African tradition because, you know, we, we, we hold it sacred. During the memorial celebration, people would listen to the reading of the Gettysburg's Address and moving speeches by some of the greats like Booker T. Washington, General Robert Smalls, and William T. Sherman. Anita makes sure the celebration continues in her plays, the church, even on the street she grew up on and in the house she grew up in. It's a legacy full of stories that will be carried on by the young generation, even if they are learning by playing. I'm, um, like I know today they're excited about playing and that kind of stuff, so it's kind of hard to tell them. So what I did yesterday, I took my grandkids um, to the National Cemetery because uh, both of my parents are buried over there. My father was in the Navy, so both my parents are buried over there. So again, I, every year I kind of go through the history and I kind of connect to what, what I say during uh, production of Decoration Day to actual spots. I so besides being a part of the Gullah Festival, the children are being taught the history year-round. Sometimes it's hard for young people to remember historical facts while playing and jumping and getting cooled down in the hot southern summer sun. And Anita kind of remembers just those times growing up, referring to have fun rather than going to the National Cemetery. I, well, first of all, I was scared of dead people. <laughs> they won't go to no cemetery. But my grandmother made me go. But it was enough excitement about the day that by the time I got up in age to realize how sacred all the different components were, then it gave me just enough of a remnant that says, okay, let me go do some research into my history. She discovered a way to join the two important elements, fun and history, all in the name of education and legacy. So now that's what I'm hoping to leave with these children. They may not know all the history, but they're going to say, you know, you did something special on Memorial Day. And I kept hearing, you know, Miss Alpertis or something say about Decoration Day. And they're going to make the connection, and they're going to do their research. And that's our responsibility, to at least give them a nugget that they can hold on to a hook. It's, you know, and so that, that's what I try to do with this. And through the gullah songs of youth and sounds of youthful laughter, the history is being remembered and developed slowly. One child. I got a chance to talk with Anita a little later, out of costume, but still full of history. I got a chance to talk with Anita. I got a chance to talk with Anita a little bit later while she was out of costume, but yet still full of history. I got a chance to talk with Anita out of costume, but still full of history. I got a chance to talk with Anita a little bit later, out of costume, but yet still full of history. Well, a little later, I got a chance to talk with Anita out of costume, but yet she was still full of history. Well, a little later, I got a chance to talk with Anita out of costume, but as usual, she had a lot of history to tell.